Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. In today's video, we're going to take a look at metadata and whether we need to apply metadata in our mastering sessions. And we're also going to take a look at file exporting. Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. I'm your host Smudge and in today's video we're going to take a look at the not so sexy but vitally important part of mastering that is metadata and file exporting. But before we get into today's video if you want to know more about digital mastering then make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you also tick that bell and select all to receive notifications on all of our videos moving forward. And if you want to support the channel, I'll also leave further links below for an account I have through buymeacoffee.com. So if you want to support the channel by buying me a coffee, then there'll be links in the description down below. And I'll also leave further links in the description, which gives details of the soon-to-be-launched Mastering in the Box membership scheme. So we frequently talk about the enhancing and creative side of mastering. But one part that is often overlooked but vitally important is the finalising of the song or project. Now part of the role of the mastering engineer is quality control, but also to ensure that the song file or files are ready to be released into the world. And this is where we consider metadata and file exporting. Now there will be a few things that I won't cover in this video, in that I won't be going in depth on bit depth, diver and sample rates. These are quite technical considerations and things I will cover in a future video. It will also be impossible to cover every possible scenario in a condensed video, so I'll be covering some of the more common considerations with modern mastering. Metadata, put simply, is the data that is added to the music file that is used to identify and present the audio. This information is vitally important as without the correct metadata, the music would not correctly be attributed to the relevant parties and thus collecting and attributing royalties would be a nightmare. When it comes to metadata, there are varying degrees of data required, but the basics include the artist's name, genre, track titles, album title, songwriter credits and track numbers to name but a few. It is also vital that full credit is given to any additional artists, producers, songwriters or engineers that may have been involved in the project along the way. One very important part of metadata is an International Standards Recording Code, or ISRC. This code acts like a digital fingerprint for your music and is used for sales tracking through avenues such as streaming platforms. Without an ISRC, your song will not be eligible for digital distribution, as the streaming platforms use this code to track plays and sales. But do not fear, as most, if not all, digital distribution companies issue an ISRC when you upload your song ahead of release. An ISRC is needed for every song that is released, so if you have a five song EP, then you would need five ISRC codes. When it comes to metadata, it's always best to be safe and include metadata wherever possible. But the information is not always stored in every single file format. So be mindful to avoid wasting unnecessary time completing metadata when it's not needed. If you are releasing your track or tracks via a digital distribution platform only, then it is not necessary to complete full metadata inside of your DAW as you'll be asked to fill in the details again when you upload the song or songs to the digital distribution platform. If you do however want to run an mp3 file or burn some copies of the CD then it is a good idea to add the metadata before you render the master track in your DAW of choice as the metadata will be embedded into the CD file or mp3 and will be readable when using various song players. MP3, FLAC and AIFF take advantage of full metadata, whereas WAV files only partially use metadata. And if you want to do a CD run and do a DDP file, this will also need metadata as well. So if you're looking to only release music for a digital distributor, then don't worry about completing the metadata in the DAW, as you'll only have to do it again at the upload stage to the digital distribution platform. 
but if you want MP3 files or a CD, then add the metadata whilst inside of the door if you can. To add the metadata to the song inside of Studio One, if you're using the song page, so this will be for artist users or for anyone using the song page for their full mastering session, if you click on the song tab at the top, and then you'll see the song setup tab here, and then you'll have the meta information, and you'll be able to add the basic metadata into your song. There is an exception that you won't be able to add ISRC codes in this particular setup. If you're mastering more than one song, so you're doing an EP or an album, if you then go into the project tab, it's even easier. On the left hand column here, we have the full tab here for the album details. So it's the album name, the artist, we can even put the, the album cover artwork in there, and we can put all those details there. And then if we click these little arrows next to the, the titles, you can put in the further details, including ISRC codes. And you can even put individual song artwork into the projects as well, if you so wish. When it comes to file exporting, this is where we can become easily confused about what file formats we need. How is the song going to be released? Digital or CD? WAV or MP3? What's a DDP? 16-bit or 24-bit? 44.1K or 48kHz? These are just a few of the considerations we need to bear in mind when it comes to exporting our masters. It won't be possible, as I mentioned before, to cover every eventuality but here are the more common file exporting needs. When it comes to the digital distribution, or with technology moving forward so quickly, there is a little more flexibility these days when it comes to the file requirements for digital distribution. But the main concern here is that the file must be high quality. The typical recommendations for when you upload a song via digital distribution are that the file must be a WAV file with a bit depth of 16 bits and a sample rate at 44.1 kilohertz. This has been the standard for some time now, but some of the more popular companies will accept FLAC files, and you can even submit MP3 files, but these are not recommended, as they are a lossy format of lower quality. DistroKid do accept up to 24-bit and 96 kilohertz, but they do note that 16-bit and 44.1 kilohertz are typical. One thing to mention is that the stipulations around uploading artwork are quite strict, so be sure to check that your artwork matches the requirements of your chosen distribution company. When it comes to CD burning or duplication, there are a few typical methods to consider. The first method is by creating a disk description protocol or DDP file. This is widely considered an industry standard format for creating CD runs as the DDP is a precise electronic version of your music which is instantly ready for duplication. The DDP file can then be electronically sent to your CD production company of choice for the CD run. The second option is to send over audio files, but this option may incur a small charge from the CD production company as they will have to create the master file. If you are sending an audio file, then it will need to be a WAV, AIFF or FLAC file at a bit depth of 16 bits and sample rate of 44.1 kHz. The bit depth and sample rate need to be at these settings to ensure that no noise, distortion or coloration is introduced. The final method is to create a CD master yourself and send this by post to your CD production company of choice. Finally, I do just want to acknowledge not everyone creates music to send out to the world and some like to create music for fun and their own personal listening. Probably the most common file format for casual listening is the MP3 file. An MP3 file is not considered a high quality file format as the file is a compressed lossy file. The benefits of the MP3 are that the file size is far reduced than that of a WAV file, but the audio quality will suffer as a result. If you want to create an MP3 file, then try and make the file as high quality as possible by using a 320 kilobit per second setting if you have the option. My personal preference would be to create a FLAC file, as this is a high quality file, 
but a smaller file size than the WAV file. This would be a much better option, especially if you wanted to use the song as reference material for other mixing and mastering projects down the line. So I thought I'd just quickly show you how to export files inside of Studio One. And this is Studio One Fire Professional. And if we go up to the Song tab, and you will see there's the Export Mixdown tab here. So if we select that, and that gives us the option to change the file name, where we're gonna publish, do not publish, upload to Sphere or SoundCloud. And then we can then change the file format here. So we have WAV files, AIFF, FLAC, and if you want to do MP3 or OGVORBIS, etc., we've got those additional options there. As I say, the main ones are going to be your WAV, your AIFF, your FLAC, and if you did want to go down the MP3 file route, then we have that option here too. And just to show you, if you do the MP3 file here, and then you can change the bitrate here, do the high quality one as much as possible to get the best from your from your files but I would much further much recommend the FLAC file if you want to do some form of referencing but as I say do your WAV file 16 bit change that to 44 one and you can do your export in mix down for your CDs and for your uploading to the digital distribution platforms and here we are inside of the project page so if you are mastering an album you're then going to do the file exporting from the project page we've got lots of options here so we can do your ddp image so if you want to do a cd run you can make your ddp ddp image direct from the project page which is a really cool feature but if you wanted to do uh, another release so if you want to go down the digital distribution route then if you go to digital release you change your file location and you've got your formats here. So you've got your waves, 16 bit, 44 ones, really simple and easy to do to change. You can add in all your track numbers to the file name, add artists to the file name. You can do that. You've got AIFF files, FLAC files, and once again, you've got your MP3 files there. So if you did want to do an MP3 file, I would always go down the, the route of the most high quality mp3 file you can use but once again i'd always recommend flac over mp3 well that's it for this week's video and i fully appreciate that it's not the most sexy and glamorous of tasks talking about metadata and file exporting but it is so important and is a vitally important part of mastering because if the metadata isn't right especially if you're uploading it to digital distribution companies they will reject your your submissions so you need to make sure you get it right at the source so i hope you found this video useful if you do have any questions then please let me know in the comments section down below and if you want to know more about digital mastering make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you tip that bell and select all to receive notifications on all of our videos moving forward and if you do want to support the channel as i say i'll leave links in the description down below where you can just buy me a coffee or find out more details about the mastering in the box membership scheme so all that's left for me to say is I hope you'll keep safe and well, and I'll see you in the next video, coming real soon.